In this session today, we will discuss about significance of Pleistocene epoch in prehistory. The Pleistocene is a later epoch of the Quaternary period marked by great climatic oscillation as well as appearance of man. Evolution in man's physical and cultural attribute took place during this stage. It is at this stage that we can see him becoming not only human but also the pioneer of human culture. The full significance of this progress can only be grasped if we understand the nature of his contest with the physical world and the ultimate time taken to achieve even the smallest advance. During Pleistocene Epoch, Earth's average temperature has always been cold enough to maintain ice at high latitudes. But Pleistocene climate has not been constant. Ice coverage has fluctuated dramatically with continental ice sheets advancing and retreating over large parts of North America and Europe. During Glaciation's event, huge volumes of water were trapped in continental ice sheets, lowering sea levels as much as 130 meters and exposing land between islands and across continents. Ice covered up to 30% of the Earth's surface. Pleistocene Epoch experienced important geographic and climatic changes that affected human societies. The Pleistocene climate was characterized by repeated glacial cycles during which continental glaciers pushed to the 40th parallel in some places. A major event is the general glacial excursion termed as glacial. Glaciers are separated by interglacial. Pleistocene succession occurred in long duration. Major shifts were found in animal and plant kingdom. It brought remarkable changes in human migration and settlement pattern. The ice sheets were found to be expanded into the temperate zones. The tropical zones were greatly contracted with the increase of temperature when the melted water enlarged the size of the rivers and streams and some areas experienced the gradual drying up of the river and lakes. Such climate fluctuation had a direct impact on the lives of plants and animals. The Pleistocene epoch gave rise to glacial period in temperate zones such as North and Central Europe and pluvial periods in tropical and subtropical zones such as the greater part of the African continent. The first glacial period is known as Gung in Europe, which roughly corresponds to the Hungarian Pluvian Pleis of Africa. The increase in surface temperature led to the first interglacial period in Europe and first interpluvial in Africa. Second glaciations is known as Mendel in Europe and second pluvial, the Kamasian pluvial in Africa. Then climatic shift led to the second interglacial in Europe and second interpluvial in Africa. Third glaciation of Europe is known as Rhys and in Africa the third pluviation is known as Kanjeran. The last glacial period is known as Worm and pluvial period is known as Gamblian. During the Pleistocene, the different Stone Age culture and traditions originated and developed in the face of the earth. The Stone Age is usually divided into three separate periods, Paleolithic period, 
Mesolithic period and Neolithic period. Throughout the Paleolithic, man was a food gatherer, depending for his subsistence on hunting wild animals and birds, fishing and collecting wild fruits, nuts and berries. Now let's look at the emergence of different traditions. The first tradition, a Babylonian tradition. On the basis of very rich materials form, the Somme Valley in the north of France and the Thames Valley in the south of England, two main lower Paleolithic traditions have been recognized in Western Europe. The Abibillion has been reported from deposits of Lower Pleistocene Age. Acheulean Tradition The Acheulean Tradition begins in the second interglacial and persists to the close of the third interglacial. The type site is on the 30 meters terrace of the Somme Valley at Saint Achuel near Amiens in northern France. The upper Acheulians is characterized by elongated hand axes that exhibit very straight and finely chipped edges in marked contrast with the lower Acheulian. Clactonian tradition. The evidence from Clacton on Sea, Essex and Swanscombe Kent in the Thames Valley of southeastern England clearly shows that the main development of the Clactonian occurred during early second interglacial times. Levalosian and Mosterian tradition. Levalosian tradition first appears in deposits of the late second interglacial in association with hand axes of middle Acheulean type and persists into fourth glacial or warm times. The middle Paleolithic assemblages first appear in deposits of the third interglacial and persists during the first major oscillation of the fourth glacial or warm stage. Mosterian traditions of flake tool is, on the other hand, associated with the Neanderthal race. Upper Paleolithic Tools The Upper Paleolithic, which occupies only approximately one-tenth of the time span of the period as a whole, first appears in horizons referable to the warm interstadial and it persists to the very end of the late glacial times. The earliest documented stone tools were found in East Africa, manufactures unknown. They belong to an industry now known as Aldo One. The Paleolithic appeared first in Africa during the later Bila Frankian or Lower Pleistocene. By the beginning of the Middle Pleistocene, probably about one million years ago, tool making it spread to Europe and Asia. This Paleolithic stage of culture continued up to the Pleistocene. The worldwide termination of the Pleistocene period, approximately 10,000 years ago, was coincident with the end of the last glaciation in the northern hemisphere and of the last pluvial in the tropical and subtropical belts. In Europe, culture history is based on the relationship of the different industrial stages to the deposits of the Pleistocene, glacial advances and interglacial epochs. These are also correlated with periods of fluctuating sea level. The level was low when water was locked up in the ice sheets and high during interglacial. Caution is needed, however, since in East Africa, tectonic movements cannot be discounted as factors in bringing about the fluctuation of lake levels on which the pluvial hypothesis is largely based. During the later tertiary, groups of apes occupying 
tropical and equatorial savanna in northeastern Africa and southwestern Asia became fully bipedal simultaneously with the specialization of the hands for using tools. Stone tools first appeared in lower Pleistocene contexts at the base of Bed One and the Old Dubai Gorge. In South Africa, they are found in early mid Pleistocene. It is only at the Old Dubai that the hominid fossils are unquestionably associated with faunal remains on living sites. The manufacture of stone tools was a development of the greatest importance, considerably facilitating the consumption of meat. The tools could also be used for pounding or sharpening stakes for digging, thus increasing the sources of vegetable foods. Natural tools were intensively collected at the habitation sites and must have been used as aids to hunting and protection. The hominids in the Far East and Africa of the earlier and Pleistocene cultures are associated with the Pithecanthropus top in which slender and more robust forms are distinguishable. By the early upper Pleistocene, beginning with the Ris glaciations, more specialized industries point to distinct activity patterns, suggesting that groups now split up into small units for specific purposes. This specialization of activity is best seen in the Mosterian industries of the early last glacial or worm where distinct traditions are found in the cave and rock shelters which now form regular havens for bands of hunters. Now, evidences of human evolution, settlement and migration. In Africa, the beginning of last pluvial was time of population explosion and movement into the previously unoccupied forests of the equator where regionally specialized cultures develop. Middle Paleolithic period is best known as the era in Europe and the Near East during which the Neanderthals lived. Neanderthals nursed their elderly and practiced ritual burial indicating an organized society. The earliest evidence of settlement in Australia dates to around 40,000 years ago when modern humans likely cross from Asia by island hopping. Evidence for symbolic behavior such as body ornamentation and burial is ambiguous for the Middle Paleolithic and still subject to debate. Modern humans spread out further across the earth during the period known as the Upper Paleolithic. The Upper Paleolithic is marked by a relative rapid succession of often complex stone artifact technologies and a large increase in the creation of art and personal ornaments. The earliest evidence of archaeological activity anywhere from the East African Rift is the Old Dubai Gorge in modern-day Tanzania. It is thought that the earliest hominids evolved in Old Dubai around 4 million years ago. They are known as Australopithecines and fossils of them include the famous Lucy. The first crude older one stone tools produced there were made as long as 2.5 million years ago by the later Homo habilis. Around a million years later developed older one and then Acheulean industries produced more advanced hand axes 
by Homo erectus. Archaeological study of this era was pioneered by people such as Louis Leakey and his family and is centered on the earliest development of tool use, fire and diet in hominid societies. Sites such as Colombo Falls have produced well-preserved evidence of this activity. By the beginning of Middle Paleolithic, around 120,000 BC, African societies were hunter-gatherers proficient in exploiting the herds of large mammals that populated the continent for meat, including elephant and fearsome African buffalo. The area that is now the Sahara Desert was open grassland and it seems that early humans preferred this plains environment to the jungles in the center. Homo sapiens appears for the first time in the archaeological record around 100,000 BC in Africa and soon developed a more advanced method of flint tool manufacture involving striking flakes from a prepared care. This permitted more control over the size and shape of finished tools and led to the development of composite tools, that is, projectile points and scrappers which could be hafted onto spears, arrows or handles. In turn, this technology permitted more efficient hunting such as that demonstrated by the African industry. The Pleistocene Epoch spans for 1.8 million years before present to 10,000 years before present. This chronological span of Pleistocene is established from studies in different parts of the world, including North America. The climate during the Pleistocene Epoch was extremely cold. More than 30% of the world was covered in ice sheets. The Pleistocene is a period when the last ice age happened. Many paleontologists study Pleistocene fossils in order to understand the climates of the past. It was not only a time, but during that period, the climate and temperature shifted dramatically. The fossils of Pleistocene period are often abundant, well-preserved, and can be dated very precisely. Today, there is a concern about climatic change, for example, global warming, and how it will affect us. Paleontologists working on Pleistocene fossils are providing a growing amount of data on the effect of climate change on the Earth's biota, making it possible to understand the effects for future climate change.